Okay, so I just wanted to run through how I created my uh, new profile picture. So straight into Superimpose. I've already created a couple of hipstamatic shots and I want to combine them together. So drag the first image uh, into Superimpose, which is one of me with my hands covering my face. And next I'm going to get uh, a foreground image to lay out over the top, which is going to be the image of me um, without my face covered. There we go. Next straight into transform and just uh, scale to fit. And I've already had a little play around with this and um, colour burn at around 80% was the uh, blend method that worked really well for this specific combination of images. So I'll get that set up. But you can see there that it doesn't just blend my uh, hands and face, it blends my whole body and I want to sort of disguise that so it's across to masks and start out with a nice big brush and just brushing away over my body um, so that all that is uh, revealed is just the underlying body so that my arms and my body um, are fully um, opaque. And what I'll do at this stage, I'll just hit the uh, the magnify icon which views the mask so that I can see what I've missed. So I'll just clean that up and then I'll go into the, um, I'm going to zoom in and I'll go into the magic wand tool and I'll just pick out the rest of my t-shirt. Zoom in again to the little areas that I need to focus on. There we go. And just uh, tidy that up a little bit. Brill. So I've gone home um, and you can see there that it's worked quite well. Um, when you view it on full resolution there's a little bit of an issue with the edge of the mask around my neck. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to go back into the brush but I'm going to hit the cog at the top there and I'm going to change the settings to maximize the smoothness in the size and also make it soft. So this kind of just gives me the ability to gently blur the edge of that mask so that it isn't a sharp solid line. It just blends the two images together quite nicely. And I just whiz around and finish that off. That's done and there we go and it's always a good idea once you've created a mask actually well I'm just going to show you actually you can change uh, the opacities once you've created the mask and you can even change the blend method but um, I'm going to stick with my 80% go back home I always think it's a good idea to save the mask um, once you've created it just in case you need to go back and play around with it again so I'm going to save the mask and then I'm going to save the image to the uh, to the image library, and that's really 90% of the work done. Um, I just wanted to add an additional filter over the top, so I went to Alt Photo and imported the image. Hit the Edit button. And you can select a range of sort of film finishes really. And I like the BMW, uh, the black and white vintage scratched tin type finish. So I'm going to save that to the camera roll. I'm going to go back now to superimpose. And for the background image, I'm going to pull in the original hipstamatic image of me with my uh, face uncovered. There we go. And for the foreground image, I'm going to pull in the the uh, fil the, the filtered image that I've just created. I'm 
And there we go, and I'm just going to transform. And, I've, and for now I'll change it to normal um, with, with no transparency. And what I actually need to do is switch round so that the background becomes the foreground um, just to enable me to create the mask. Um, and I'm going to focus on my eyes. And what I want to do, I want to pull the whites of my eyes out um, because the, the filters made them quite cream. And what I'm actually doing here is I'm, I'm creating a mask but I'm pulling the cream into the hipstamatic image so I'm going to reverse the mask once I've created it. It's just easier to create the mask from this image because there's more um, contrast and there's more for the magic wand tool to select from. It's just a better image to mask. I'm going to use a com combination of the magic wand and the paintbrush. Um, and if I go wrong, I'll just hit the undo arrow at the top there. Um, like I say, it's just a slightly fiddly process. Um, just adjust the settings and the threshold if it if it's not working. I'm not going to do this um, quite as um, accurately as I did it for my original image. See, I've used the rubber there as well, the eraser tool, um, rather than undo just to make a, a slight adjustment. So there we go. So now I need to reverse the mask. So I hit invert. And the whites haven't really quite been pulled out um, as much as I would like. So what I'll do, I'll go to filters and I'll just change the foreground brightness levels and you can see there the eyes now have become much, the whites of the eyes have become much whiter there we go and then I'll just go into transform and I'll just play around with the blend methods to select the one that uh, that works the best for the image and in this case it's going to be hard light There we go. That's it. And we'll go home and I'll export the Im export the image to the library. And what you'll see in a minute, I'll open it up in the image library and then it'll transfer across to the uh, the final version that I created just in a minute or two. Um, well, I just took a little bit more time on the whites of the eyes. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Thank you.